We have this uh, Lexar flash drive that arrived in the mail today for recovery. Uh, let's have a look at what can be done about it. So this is built on Alcor controller and it has only one NAND on the back here, which is made by Spactac. Looking at how bent this connector is, I would say that it could be potential issue if those headers would look bad but they don't look bad at all they actually look pretty good to me to be honest with you lower the light a little bit let's have a look yeah we got a pretty solid connection on this header this looks good this looks good and that looks good they all look fine and i think the board itself is um, in good shape uh, visually I can't spot anything abnormal with it because it's got uh, headers for the controller it's always a good idea to uh, pressure test them first and by pressure test I mean just apply a little bit of pressure to each pin to see if it's loose or if they're all still nice and attached and what it seems like on that side they were all good on this side they're excellent about here also pretty sturdy nothing is shaking nothing is moving up here all of these are not connected so I'm not gonna test them and these two do great that is very interesting you see this gray stuff here I wasn't supposed to be on there and same goes for these dots it might be some sort of liquid damage that it's been exposed to that could have corroded the device. So at this point, it would be a good idea to uh, plug it into the USB port. We got a light and we got a beep. We see here that it's getting recognized as a generic, see, generic flash disk. 7.76 I don't know what that means and then nothing after I got no capacity to it all right so if the unit is not detecting its capacity but it is detecting that something is plugged in uh, it's likely to be in a safe mode and if it is um, there might be misconnection somewhere or lack of connection somewhere on the board so let's remove the NAND first and see what the board is gonna act like if the NAND is removed whether or not we're gonna see some changes Clean the pads while we add it. Okay. So now we're gonna go and plug in just the USB board by itself. 
and we're still getting the LED and we're still getting the same feedback from the USB port so what would be the next step I mean next step should be uh, because we put it through the heat cycle already uh, let's take the backup of the chip put it in the reader that way we don't have to read it twice if it comes down to uh, uh, having to do a chip off recovery now once um, the NAND chip is read using the NAND reader we will have a physical image of what's inside of this memory uh, component it's a little bit of a raised pad there if it's going to be a problem we may have to uh, flatten it out I suppose probably better do it now than later Pin one to pin number one. It goes in there like that. Reader software. You get ID for the first bank. It's recognized as a 16 gig NAND. And now we just set it up to read. This is gonna take a while, um, probably like half an hour. Is done. It took about 27 minutes to read it. All right, so we're gonna need to use a couple of things here. Uh, number one, we'll need a stencil. Uh, number two will need paste. Number three will need another napkin. And number four will need this knife. So, start the fume extraction. Um, what do we need to do here? We need to reball uh, this component and all of these pads need to have like little tiny solder balls underneath them so using um, uh, solder balls with like a jig is an option i never used it i really like to use this method for bga chips with big spacing uh, large pitch it's very simple uh, once you get a little practice on it so um, the base is new it's I just got it recently and I never used this brand before I'm still getting used to it and I'm starting to get a hang of it uh, every time uh, you switch between products this kind of things do happen um, my previous paste was a bit more dry and um, I didn't need to do this step but with this uh, paste I find that it's absolutely necessary so the paste on its own it's uh, a bit too liquid like there's a lot of flux in there so I just take a napkin and I dab the paste in to soak up the wetness then we take the stencil 
lay it down and line it up. Alright, lay it down, line it up. You take the knife, scoop. Yeah, I would probably try it out a bit more if, if I could at this point. Like it's still coming out too wet. Like I usually don't like it to be so reflective. Because what happens when uh, the paste is so liquidy, When you go to lift the chip off of it, it smudges. And I feel like that's what's gonna happen here now. You see it right there? It's asking to be redone. And you know what? Like it's only gonna take a little bit of time to redo it, but it's gonna save us a whole lot of potential effort from having to redo it twice or second guess whether it's making contact or not so again just dab it a bit more you can see that it's nice and dryish brush this the best way to clean um, the stencil is obviously by using a ultrasonic cleaner but when you're trying to get this job done quickly like this a brush will do just fine so now let's try this again Line her up. Yeah, this is much better. The only thing is, is that we don't have that much off of it now. <laughs> and hopefully that will be enough. Now watch me do this one-handed. Yeah, this is how my old paste consistency used to be. You can see it's not as reflective when it goes into the ports, into the bores. Much more manageable this way. As you can see, we end up with pretty nice and even amount. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. We're not worried too much about the surrounding pads, but what's in the center grid is critical. So make sure that it's all nice and even. I'll flow this at 350 temperature and uh, 40 airflow. I'm 
Oh, it's done? Yeah, it looks pretty good. That slant right there on the white line indicates where the first pad has to be. I'll lay it down. The chip will position itself. But when it starts to float by itself and get pulled into the pads, you'll know that it's actually a good time to let go of the heat. You see right there? Yeah, so that indicates that it's fully flown. I'm just gonna give it a little rest, cool it off, and give it a test. Now there's a good chance that this procedure, you know, uh, isn't going to uh, work if the if the connection originally wasn't the issue because if the connection originally wasn't the issue then the problem is somewhere else but if the connection was the problem right from the start then making sure that it's just remounted properly again with new fresh solder is gonna eliminate a lot of potential problems down the road and make the work faster so let it cool off for a little bit and uh, plug it in Okay, now that the unit is cold enough, let's try it out. We still don't have it populating on the screen that it's plugged in. <clears throat> so the problem wasn't resolved by reballing the chip. That's not the end of the world because uh, we now have the um, content of, of the uh, NAND chip itself. So I did find two conflicts on there. And it did improve quite a bit of three things here. So this looks like to be used on Mac. A lot of files have a dot in front of them. That's why they're coming up with a red uh, circle in front of them. The files that don't have a dot all have green or gray uh, if it's unknown. So let's go ahead and save all this. Even though the device couldn't be recovered uh, with the repair attempt, uh, the data was pretty easily recoverable using the uh, chip off technique. So uh, in cases where uh, one method fails, <laughs> there's always an option to try the second method. Uh, chip off recovery, I consider it to be the uh, finish line, so to speak, for uh, the device. It, in my opinion, it's always better to bring the device back to life. And if that's not an option, um, then uh, substitution of the circuitry and the controller function and everything else that surrounds the NAND on the flash memory device uh, could be attempted to be recreated with software tools. For those of you who found this video interesting, hit like. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and if you got yourself in a situation where you do need these services, uh, the link in the description will lead you to our website where you can request them. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next episode.